in this section we're going to discuss about reaction of alkene with halogens hydrogen potassium permanganate and also we discuss about syn and anti-addition syn addition tells us about the product that's being formed when two groups get bonded on from the same side on the other hand anti-addition is the kind of product you get when two groups get bonded from opposite side. For example, in first example, you can see that Br is added to a double bonded compound. But once this kind of bonding takes place, there is no unsaturation or there is no restricted rotation. Since there is a single bond here, the, these groups can rotate freely. In other words, cis or trans would not exist for molecule like this. On the other hand, in second compound, which is the cyclic compound with a double bond, that's alpha and alkene, here you don't understand what kind of addition has taken place. All halogen gets bonded like this. One of them would get bonded from the bottom so this is from the bottom and the other one would get bonded from the top. When there is a restricted rotation, in that case, you'd expect trans isomer. In a ring compound like this, there is a restricted rotation. That means you can't rotate trans to a cis. Only by breaking a bond, you can convert trans to a cis isomer. So keep this in mind, addition of halogen takes place in, a, in an anti-fashion. That means one of the halogen gets bonded from the bottom and the other one is from the top. Even though anti-addition also ha had happened in the first case, but that doesn't give you any trans isomer because this is, it forms a single bonded compound and there is no restricted restriction of rotation. So you would not, even though there was this anti-addition, but product is going to be the same in this case. This slide shows mechanism of halogen addition reaction. In this case, one of the Br is going to form a cyclic structure like this, which you call cyclic bromonium ion. Basically, the pi electron from alkene, this is pi electron from alkene, contributes it to Br, but Br then would have too many electrons because it cannot have more than eight electrons. So what it does, as this ring comes close to Br, it transfers its electron pair from the bond to this bromine. And so this bromine gets out as Br minus with extra electron. Now, in this triangular structure, we need to understand where the pairs are coming from. This pair, is coming from pi electron and let me also identify the electron this is electron pair that bromine that bromine had and then it has two other pairs remember one of his pairs is, is taken up by the other br so now you have all together around the bromine two four solely on br and then you get a half share of the other two, then that gives six. So in this shared triangular structure, bromine has six electron. Now, if you look at periodic table and count S and P electrons along the line where Br is, you'd find that there are seven electrons. So that's, it's supposed to have, that's the valence electrons. So it's supposed to have seven, but it has six, that's why there is a positive charge development in this complex. Now, how does this reaction happen? Since Br is plus, it's going to attract electron away from the carbon. And these are carbon, keep that in mind. So carbon develops delta plus. And so Br minus, it got separated with all these electrons it has. Remember that Br minus has all these electrons. Br has two, four, six, eight. So it gets attracted to these 
positively charged carbon in the triangular ring. But the question is, can it come this way? Answer is no, because of the BR taking that place. I mean, he's pretty much like a big sumo wrestler blocking your passage through a door. So you try to avoid that door and try to use the other door where there is no blockage. Same thing happens in, a, in, an, organ, in, a, in an organic reaction. When there is a big group sitting somewhere, the, the other group is going to approach from completely opposite direction. So that's why this Br- approaches the carbon from the other direction, which is completely away from the direction where the Br is, is waiting. And this leads to anti-addition. And this is the final product of this anti-addition reaction. Addition of hydrogen is, on the other hand, takes place from the same side of the plane. We can understand it by considering the role of catalyst in addition of hydrogen. If, if you think about surface of a catalyst, so this is the surface of a catalyst, usually it's a metal, hydrogen first gets bonded to that catalyst like this. So it's going to remain on the surface of that catalyst. Now, alkene for the reaction has to come to the surface. And as you can see that on the surface, we have these hydrogens already sitting. So only way it can get bonded would be when both of them get bonded from the same direction. So let me show you one pictorially how this can happen. This is the alkene. This hydrogen has to come from here. This hydrogen has to come from here. So there's no way that it can, can undergo anti-addition uh, product. So only product possible would be syn addition product, or we often call syn stereochemistry. So keep that in mind, addition of hydrogen happens in a syn manner. Again, this is, in this particular case, this product is a single bonded alkane. So syn or anti-addition would not be understood in this product because there is no C strands isomer possible. But when there is a C strands isomer possible, then you'd expect a cis isomer. Now we talk about other types of reaction, especially oxidation reaction due to potassium permanganate. Now, Potassium permanganate gives series of different products depending upon whether it's neutral, permanganate, basic, or acidic. Now the top reaction is, is the basic permanganate because it's, it's not just water there, there is also sodium hydroxide added. So that makes the solution basic. In basic permanganate solution, Thin addition takes place. So this is the thin addition. First, it forms a complex with MnO4, just like this. So when it forms the complex, two oxygens from are bonded from the same side of MnO4. So that gives you thin addition. And finally, this bond gets broken here and hydrogen gets bonded. So you finally get two OH on the same side of the ring structure, and that's why it's cis. Again, cis trans isomer is possible here, and that's what you're seeing here. Now, in case you're thinking about four bonds around that carbon, around these, these are all carbon. So it, there is one hydrogen here and one hydrogen here. But that doesn't change our answer because two OH groups are on the same side. So that's cis cyclohexene one, two, Diol. Di means two. Ol is alcohol group. When permanganate solution is neutral or acidic, series of different products can be formed depending upon what is bonded to carbon-carbon double bond. If there is no hydrogen bonded to the carbon, 
containing the double bond and their two substituent groups bonded, then it not only breaks the bond, the double bond, it introduces oxygen in that place. So that's what you're seeing here. In other words, it forms a ketone. In this case, on both sides, we're seeing the same thing. Like this carbon, if you look at this carbon, there's no hydrogen there because I have two, the double bond and then the third bond here, fourth bond here. So there's no hydrogen. So basically when there's no hydrogen, it just introduces a, a double bonded oxygen. So basically you get two ketones from this compound. Now, if there is an, there is an hydrogen present, then the carbon that has hydrogen would be converted into carboxylic acid. So in other words, that carbon would have the functional group of COOH. Now, here we're going to show you that when there are two hydrogens, not just one, one gives you carboxylic acid. When two hydrogens are bonded to a carbon, then that part of the double bond would be converted into carbon dioxide. So it not only breaks down here, also this thing changes to carbon dioxide. Now let's look at the other side of the double bond. Is there any hydrogen bonded there? Answer is no, because this carbon has four bonds and obviously there is no room for hydrogen. And since there is no room for hydrogen, it introduces oxygen. And that's why you get a ketone. So keep this in mind. If there is one hydrogen, it changes to carboxylic acid. Two hydrogens on, the, on, the, on a carbon, it becomes carbon dioxide. No hydrogen becomes ketone group, C double bond O group. So make sure you understand the reaction. Now in last example, these hydrogens are not shown. So make sure you at least fill in with hydrogen around that carbon-carbon double bond. So let's focus on this carbon. I have two bonds, that means I have two other hydrogens. Now you can understand this reaction better. This is neutral permanganate being added. How do I know it's a neutral permanganate? Because it just says that water is being added. If it is basic, they would write down NaOH. Neutral and acidic gives a similar reaction. So it breaks down the bond here, double bond is begun. Since this is CH2, that this part changes to CO2 and that's why you get CO2 on the right side. Now let's look at this carbon, the other carbon that con contains the double bond. That carbon has one hydrogen. And remember I mentioned that if there's one hydrogen, that group would be changed into COOH. So keeping this carbon just introduce the functional group OOH. So, so these are the final products of these reactions. Polymer formation happens when a number of alkenes are bonded back to back. So you need to have something to in initiate or begin the reaction and then it keeps on happening. So there <clears throat> Finally, all these carbons get bonded back to back. This is how you can get polymer of ethylene and it's called polythene.